Hello, uh, participatory cultures folks. I am going to be walking you through uh, exporting your tweets from DMI TCAT so that we can do a little bit of our coding over the next few weeks. Um, as you can see, I have opened up uh, my uh, DMI TCAT analysis uh, page. Uh, hopefully that you have that still in the Word document that you had created a while back when we were doing the installation process. Uh, so you should just go to this URL, pop in the username and password, and that will bring you here. Um, so we are going to be exporting uh, tweets to do uh, open coding and then axial coding and then selective coding analyses on them. Uh, we're going to be coding, open coding about 200 of them, not too many. Um, and we're going to do them uh, based on either of two things. Um, if you have something that is time sensitive, like a TV show, uh, you're going to want to uh, make sure that you are exporting within that specific time frame uh, that you're interested in, like during the contents of the TV show. Uh, if you are uh, interested in coding, if you just, if you, it's not time sensitive rather, uh, you can just do a random number of 200 tweets. And either one of those is perfectly fine for the purposes of our study. We just have to make sure that we specify it. Uh, now I have, I started uh, archiving Gotham uh, a while back, and there was a really great TV show on, uh, this show is on Monday nights, if I'm correct, and there was a really great one on 10, uh, 10 and Uh, what we need to know about uh, the way that things are archived is that we need to know that these are um, archived according to Unix uh, time, which is also Greenwich Mean Time. And that is currently four hours ahead of where we are right now. Uh, so if I wanted to, if this show starts at 8 o'clock, uh, we want to make sure that we're starting our archive at midnight. However, I also want to see that um, just how it looks a little bit beforehand so I can make sure that I'm starting it at the right time and I, I haven't messed that up. Now you'll notice that we have, uh, there's a way to specify the exact time here and we do that on 24 hour time. So we have the year, the month, and the day, and then we have the hours, minutes, and seconds. So here that's 11 o'clock, hour, zero, zero, which is minutes, zero seconds. And I want that to end, I'll let it end, like to say an hour after the show usually ends. So um, the show usually runs from midnight to 1 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time. Uh, that's eight to nine Eastern Time. So if I click Update Overview, I will see that the pattern that I'm expecting is correct, that there's not that many tweets during the week or the hours leading up and then right around let's see it looks like um, 758 things start upticking and then things happen and then something exciting really happened right over here and this is uh, 50 minutes into the show must have been some sort of cliffhanger then we got the commercials and then the show ends and then we the tweeting sort of stops. So we really want to grab these tweets right in this area over here. Um, we can, if we want to narrow this down to, um, let's say 55, 2355 to, um, we would change that to 110. And we can update our overview to just make sure that it looks like it's better. Yep. So here we're capturing those tweets during the show. We can see that sort of look very similar to what was there before. Uh, now, because this is a time sensitive uh, export, I would scroll down to, um, you can see that we have to the tweet exports subheading. And we can see you can export a random set of tweets from selection. Well, we don't really want to do a random set unless you wanted to grab a random set of tweets like um, from the show. 
that's perfectly fine too. You could say I want to grab a random set of tweets from the show. Uh, but if we wanted to do, make sure that we had all the tweets, and then you could say, well, I want these tweets that are happening at this cliffhanger or at this area over here, then we would uh, export all tweets from selection and copy those over, um, and then choose which ones we actually wanted. Uh, let's just go for the sake of, of what we're doing here. I'm just going to show you what the random set looks like. You can click... Um, download and this will take a random set of 1,000 tweets let's just check to see how many we have we have 13,000 tweets in here so that's fine uh, it takes a random selected tweets from information uh, and then you can click open with Excel and uh, we would see that uh, or you can download all tweets from selection because this is 1,000 Instead of 13,000, we'll do this because it will take less time. Uh, we can save the file. And I'll just save this over here. I'm going to create a new folder for my uh, DMI TCAT archive. And that, that's saved. Now, in Excel, uh, we're going to have to go to File open and we now need to scroll to that area and we can open that at that right that there okay and you can see uh, that there's a variety of different information going on in here. Um, we have the username and the text for these tweets, and I can spread that out a little bit. Okay. Um, now, since this is Excel, it's not getting the emojis for us, and that's one thing that's a limitation of Excel. Um, if you wanted to use Open Office because you're interested in the emojis, um, we could do that instead. Uh, in fact, let me show you what that looks like uh, in Open Office Exports. So this is going to ask us a variety of different things. Let's understand that it's comma separated, what it feels text. This is all just fine uh, the way that it is for now. We can open this. And here we go. Okay. And you can see now that these emojis have appeared uh, in here. And those are fun. Um, so if you want to uh, utilize these, then you should be working in open, in open office. I'm not sure why there's all these penguins here, but perhaps that's something with the show. And, and people who, oh, Gotham, of course, penguin. Uh, that makes sense now. Uh, so uh, let me open up also one other thing. Coding template. Okay. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking the uh, tweets that we want to use and popping them into this coding template that I have created. Uh, the template has room for 200 tweets, okay? Uh, it calculates the totals for the codes that you add, and also gives you the percentages based on, on 200. So if we have this random set of tweets, uh, it's already been randomly generated, so we can just grab the first 200 of them. And so because we're starting on line two, uh, we will go to 
um, 200 and that's right, 201. Okay, and we would copy these. Go back to our other page and paste. All right. So now we were going to have to do some uh, editing on the, the names on the different cells, but we just want to make sure that we have all the usernames and the tweets, and we do. Map text. So we just want to make sure that we're wrapping all of the text. Let's move it. Oh, can't do that. I will set the template up so that uh, it does this. We'll just have to, in case it doesn't work, select them all. Format cells, wrap text. And you can see that now everything is wrapped and it fits in that little space. And now all we need to really do need to do is we need to start coding. Some of them we might have to stretch the lines a little bit, make the lines bigger. If you want to just go ahead and do that, over, we can make the lines a little bit bigger. Select them all. Right click, row height, and let's see, just making it to like 0 0.40 would, would probably help quite a bit. Uh, for most of them, if not, fix that. I have to click on here, right click. Okay, and that will help uh, make the rows a little bit bigger. Um, and then as we're going through, uh, we now just start adding our code. So let's see, let's say the first thing we see here is a RT, and we put that as a 1. And you can see now, hopefully this will have worked, it calculates the number down at the bottom. So we don't need to do any of the math, it should already be done for us. Um, because it's a retweet, this is sort of like a foreign language one. We can just pop that in here. We don't have to translate the foreign language one unless you want to. Um, here's another retweet. And if we're just coding the retweet, then that's that's fine. Time for Gotham to start. We might have a code of pound G for Gotham. The hashtag, we might just have one because there's a general hashtag in there. Um, oops. Skip the line. This often happens when you're coding. You just have to make sure. This again is a retweet. Time for Gotham. And then we might say uh, link. Because there's a link. And then we also want to do what we also want to do every time we see a link. We want to copy the link. And we want to check out what they're linking to. So this is a link to a photo that they have uploaded. Um, I'm not sure what this picture means, but if you're part of this community, uh, you will certainly know what this photo means. So the way Twitter is handling pictures now, whoops, excuse me. So then we want to have like an L PH for like link to photo. Okay. And if there's additional information that we want to add or that you can find, uh, you can you can do that. So like uh, like time for Gotham, uh, that might be we might even call that time or start something like that because it's talking about the beginning of the show. Uh, now at the bottom of the uh, coding spreadsheet, you're going to see these tabs uh, down towards the bottom. 
open coding, open coding definitions, axial coding, axial coding definitions. Open coding, the definitions pages are essential because they help us with our coding activities. So open coding definitions, uh, this is the first one. We have RT definition, a tweet, that is a retweet. Okay. And then what we need to do is we need to take an example of that. And oops, pop it in there so that we always know uh, what it is in case we have any questions. And then the second one, uh, this was FL, which is a tweet that is in a foreign language. Okay. And then we would take, again, we take the tweet and pop it in there. Um, three. Pound G. A tweet with the Gotham hashtag. And again, we would take an example and so on. And we do this as we are creating uh, the codes. Every time you create a new code, you should go and add the definition. That way we don't forget, and that way everything is uh, up to date. Okay, And then we would save this. Um, now, if you were doing time sensitive, let's go back here, if you were doing a time sensitive one, uh, you can export all tweets from the selection and then you can go into that archive, the, the original download that you have, and you can find the tweet that you want to start with and then just get the next, uh, the, the first 200 uh, after that. Okay, so again, uh, just to reiterate, you choose your archive, you set the time constraints that you want, uh, recognize that we are four hours behind. Uh, currently, we're four hours behind, so you have, if you want something that begins at eight o'clock, that's going to be. Uh, Midnight uh, in Greenwich Mean Time, so that would be 2400 hour. Um, and uh, if it starts at 5 o'clock, then you just move it up to 5 o'clock is 1700 hours, so that would be 2200 hours that we would want, and so on. We're going to go over this in class, but just in case you need to do this again on your own, uh, these are, are these in the instructions for you. Okay, you export that, uh, you open it up in Open Office if you want to make sure you do see your emojis. And then we go, go from there and we begin the coding. Okay. Good luck. Let me know if there's any questions and I'll see you later.